you've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Dr. Barbara Eaton's 56-day chiropractic boot camp, Movewell University, The Black Diamond Club, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Dr. Alok Trivedi, Universal Traction Systems, Vantage Point Marketing, Element Mattresses, Imaging Services, Zingit Solutions, Cairo Thin, Dr. Peter Goldman's Zone School of Healing, and Everest Chiropractic Boot Camp. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 58 of Cairo Hustle. I'm your co-host, Luke Millette, and here's your host, Jim Chester. Hey everybody, so today we had the opportunity of interviewing Scott Garber. And if you guys want to know more about uh, the TIC event, which is the Berkshires Philosophy event out there in the Berkshires region of Massachusetts, stay tuned and listen to this dynamic episode. So Scott, what is your chiropractic story and what influenced you to become a chiropractor? So I actually, um, you know, my, my story is, is you know, a, a pretty amazing story. In fact, today I was doing a patient um, education class, if you would, and um, you know, I got to tell my story about what really got me into chiropractic. And you know, look, I've had some pretty fabulous chiropractors in my life. Michael Schaefer being one of them, um, who's in Chatham, New York. You know, I've had Howard Tornopsky, who's been an incredible influence in my life. Practices out in New Jersey, so shout out, shout out to both of those. Um, but I've also had some really horrible chiropractors in my life. And what I was sharing, you know, with my my group today, um, you know, 40, 45, maybe 50 years ago, I was involved in a very serious car accident. And I literally went through the windshield, didn't have seat belts on. They didn't know if they had them back, you know, in the 60s or they weren't required. And I wound up in a hospital with concussion, blacked out. And, you know, had some serious discomfort after that, knew nothing about chiropractic. And I went to a chiropractor who treated me for back pain, neck pain, you know, the whiplash. Never knew about what chiropractic was. It just thought it was for back pain, neck pain, and whiplash. And after I was done, you know, my, my visits ended, insurance stopped paying, and I kind of went about my life. But my life wasn't a simple one. You know, my life was really focused um, around my inability to adapt, uh, functioning at... Uh, less than optimal. Um, I was diagnosed early, Um, you know, as I told you before, I was born in 61. So I was diagnosed early in my life and I struggled with dyslexia. Um, I uh, worked with a doctor at Temple University who was a pioneer in the area of dyslexia and the doctor's name was Sale Pollock. And so it was an early test case. And um, during the, the, the time that I was actually being seen, the only information that they really had or understood was to keep my mind active so I would continue to learn and grow and evolve, and so they thought. And so the solution was to send me to a Hebrew school. And although I'm Jewish, you know, we never really follow that, those practices in life, and so speak very, very little Hebrew, uh, very little Yiddish, if any, but the uh, going through that model was a total failure in that what was happening with me is that I really wasn't learning. Um, I didn't have the infrastructure at home for siblings or parents to really teach me how to speak Hebrew and how to read Hebrew and stuff like that. So I went through three years of basically getting by, struggling, falling behind, feeling inadequate. Uh, feeling like a failure and so there was a lot of self-esteem stuff that was going on because I really wasn't learning and all my other friends that were my age group were moving along in in first grade and second grade and third grade and fourth grade and so as I went I was always two or three years behind um, all of my all of my friends so by the time I went into junior high school, I was frustrated, I was depressed, I was eating, I was doing drugs, I was getting high, I was drinking, I was gambling, I was doing everything that to take you know, away from you know, the pain of feeling like such a failure in life. And um, <clears throat> you know, as I went through, I got deeper, deeper into addiction, wound up in drug rehab for two years, and so 
because of the trouble I got in, I knew that I couldn't go back to that life. So I changed from one addiction to a next. Started, you know, drinking, started eating more, started gambling more, um, you know, every other addiction that you could possibly have. And so the time, by the time that, you know, I was in my mid thirties, I was nearly 450 pounds. I worked for a family, um, and it was almost like an uneven exchange, if you would, because I was family. They allowed me to go on, and I held the job, but I really couldn't produce. I couldn't get underneath the machine. I couldn't move. I needed people to work with me. And so uh, the biggest part of it is I hated the work. It just wasn't wasn't satisfying for me. And so, you know, at some point I had a conversation with my dad. Uh, my dad said, look, life is a long time to do something that you're not happy doing. And I kind of left out that, that life of work. Um, as the story goes on, is that I was moving to this yoga ashram. Uh, I didn't have any money. I was broke. I was on the balls of my ass. I was fighting with family, uh, destroyed relationships. I was living on my sister's couch for about a year. And finally, as a, a present for my birthday, my mom had sent me to a yoga ashram in Massachusetts. And I went, I really fell in love with the place. I felt accepted. I felt for the first time that people were embracing me, that they were giving me confidence. They were giving me uh, the understanding that, you know, I had a potential. Uh, the problem is, is on the way there, I broke down. You know, my body just broke down. Uh, I think I was probably 36 at the time, somewhere around that, 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 that age, and my body just couldn't sustain it. Uh, I wound up going to a chiropractor that just changed my life, uh, made me take responsibility for how I got to where I was, who I was, um, the way that I viewed life, and allowed those limiting beliefs to create what it created in my life, the spiral down. And so chiropractic for me, uh, at that point, started again as back pain is the only model I ever knew. But as I started to get adjusted, what really happened is my consciousness changed. I went from having low esteem to understanding what my potential was. I went from feeling like a failure to realizing, wow, I have a great innate potential. I could do this. And so... <clears throat> A lot of what manifested through my life, uh, you know, through my early chiropractic is what led me to understand and believe that I had a potential to go to chiropractic school, that I had a potential to help people, that I had a potential to serve my community, humanity. And so in uh, the long and short story of it is that my suffering and my experience of life uh, gave me the foundation so there's no resentment, there's no like, oh, I missed out on my life, because it made me understand suffering and made me understand humanity, uh, made me understand how I was going to work with these people and be able to serve. So hope that's helpful. Um, how long have you been running Berkshires? I, I don't recall. Well, this year, actually 2019, oh, actually... Um, being a 10th year anniversary it'll be a 10th year so this oh, year wow. that just passed was the 9th um uh 20 2019 will actually be a 10 year anniversary and um yeah for 10 years we've been doing it wow so this will be my third year going there yes you're definitely a late comer <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's interesting to see, like, how important the event is because, you know, I found that there's just so many good people that show up. And uh, that has a lot to say with uh, the history of the event, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, uh, look, Jim, there's a lot of good events out in chiropractic. Look, I just came from Cairo Sushi and had us, you know, have to say, oh, dude, it was a home run. Um, you know, there were fabulous speakers from outside the prevent profession preventing things in growth and development and business and business structure. You know, the Berkshires, uh, and, and, and then, you know, look, we, have a, we actually have Mile High. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great events out there. My niche in the market um, really was to have a place where we drew the line. And, you know, the focus was on chiropractic philosophy and how it actually 
uh, pertains to, to, to business and how it pertains to marketing and how it pertains to communications. Um, you know, I wanted to have a place where it wasn't, you know, I hate to use this word, but bump a stick of philosophy. Uh, the power that actually made the body heals the body, which I don't have a problem with. But I think that we got away and, you know, Stevenson's wasn't taught taught in in, in chiropractic school. The principals weren't really taught in chiropractic school. And so people would hear these slogans and talk about it as though it was a chiropractic philosophy. You know, Irene Gold, who actually comes I do a, a, a thing in the morning, uh, each morning, where I have some of the experts in the profession, Bill Deckens, Brian Dooley, uh, Sean Dill, uh, you know, really just uh, profound philosophical type of chiropractors that understand uh, the principles and the premises on which we practice. And every morning that we're at the Berkshires, we have a philosophy panel. You think it would be boring, but um, the feedback that I've gotten on it from Irene Gold and you know the people is that it was helpful because it really helped them to understand and connect on a deeper level uh, what we really stood for. And it goes back to asking questions on the principles and having a discussion, uh, having a conversation where it's not, well, you know, you're a mixer or you do this or you do that. What we try to do is embrace both sides because philosophy is really a conversation that nobody today really has the answers. Uh, we're developing it. And it gives us a chance as colleagues, as adults, to get there in a non threatened environment and actually talk about really what it is um, uh, and, and you know how we could better understand it and how it pertains to what we do. Um, how what we do can make, can, um, pertains to the way that we communicate it, right? I found that one of the biggest successes in my own practice was being able to understand why I do what I do, how I do what I do, and be able to communicate that in, in a mentally digestible way to the people that I serve. So chiropractic wouldn't look like this foo-foo thing like, oh yeah, the, the power that made the body heals the body. But they'd understand the processes of time. They'd understand the process of limit of, uh, of matter, of, of intelligence, um, you know, how forces work, how I work with forces as a chiropractor, how their body actually takes that information and actually does the adjustment. What a subluxation really is. You know, is it, is it um, you know, the trauma toxins in order suggestion or the inability of the body to a greater degree to be able to adapt that? And people really understand and appreciate, but if we have chiropractors don't understand it and communicate it uh, with amongst each other and have a good understanding, how do we communicate that to our patients to be actually able to have a practice that's subluxation-centered? So what would you say makes you unique in the chiropractic world? You know, I, I, I don't know if I'm unique, um, you know, with regards to, you know, any gifts that I have. Um, I think that, you know, if the one thing I would say contributed to my success the greatest, uh, that I could say that um, really made the biggest difference and influence in my life, is that I, I'm, I'm compassionate, I understand people, I want to help people, I want to serve people. Um, uh, I, I'm a decent communicator. Um, I was able to use that weakness of, of being able to not be able to communicate because of the way I perceived information and it came back out, uh, to be able to um, create systems around recognizing what my weakness was and to be able to create systems throughout my life for communicating that. So the average person that comes in, uh, and, and I feel very proud of it, I'll say, you know what, I have really never had this experience of life of understanding what chiropractic is, why I need it, how I'm able to help myself um, through working with you. And, and I think that that makes me unique. I think that my early struggles and identifying where my weaknesses are and working on them for many, many years 
developing systems uh, really actually helped me to get to that point. But then also realizing my limitations and working with people like Sean Dill and Black Diamond to um, hone uh, certain areas where I'm weak and better communicate or better lay it out. Uh, game changer for me was closed for Kairos. I thought I had it all down, 20 years of developing this, and I had a great closing rate, and it's like, oh, who the hell needs that? I'm great at what I do. I was truly humble. I didn't know what I didn't know, opened up. Uh, my friend suggested that I do it, and I went reluctantly, and went reluctantly spending the money thinking I had it all down. And I gotta say that, again, humbled by how much I can learn and how much I don't know, about how to communicate at day one, how to draw information, how to use that information in the day two, to actually walk them back up the ladder and communicate it in a more effective way to create value. And so I haven't perfected practice. Um, you know, I once heard it said that we spend a whole life practicing when we get to the point where we've mastered something and then it's time to retire. My case, maybe not, but. Um, that we spent a life refining and I think that what I've learned is that I have a lot to offer, um, I have a lot to learn, and the biggest part of it is to surround myself with people that uplift me, uh, people that support me, people that can actually uh, be in a circle, uh, and, and I'm in many of those circles, uh, in groups with people that do that, that uh, value what I do, uplift me, I uplift them, uh, we teach each other, and um, as a group, we've been able, uh, as an accountability group, we've been able to uplift everybody. And, you know, a lot of the people tell you that in relationship to that, um, the whole profession has really benefited. And I love when I see colleagues like Sean or people that went to close for Cairo and hear the success and people that are in Shubal Vision hear the success and talking about, hey, I was overcome this obstacle. I got people to close and to pay. I was able to sell them. I was able to market. I had a great event where we brought people in. I kind of feel that, not that I take responsibility for it, but that through the networks of people that I've worked and me working with them and them working with me, that we've been able to communicate and actually bring a lot of this back into the profession and to see people benefiting and that come to the Berkshires and go to the Black Diamond events and close to Kairos and Sushi and Mile High. Um, I really gotta say it warms my heart, not just the Berkshires, but to see people showing up these events and having these wonderful experiences of, of people sharing information. Um, and, and uplifting and supporting each other. Yeah, you know, I'm going to chime in here for a second and just let you know that early on um, in my developmental years between, you know, I'd say age 5 to 12, um, preteen, I struggled with dyslexia as well. So oh, wow. I understand the challenges that are involved with it and the self-esteem issues that are involved with it and not fitting in that's involved with it and feeling bad about yourself because you don't learn like everybody else does. You're in special mm -hmm. classes. Um, people don't just accept you as you are. But, you know, I tell people is like my one part of my brain was on overdrive for a long time right. in my life. And I was developing different skill sets of imagination. And yes. uh, I was developing all these different like, you know, interpersonal like skill sets of like communicating at a high level where yeah. everything I did was performed on the field. So I was, a, right. I was a yeah. really good athlete and a really good teammate, but I wasn't a very good student. So yeah. I can definitely, you know, understand how you must have felt growing up with a uh, dyslexia condition and not knowing, you know, really how to, uh, how to manage yourself because I didn't either. Yeah. Well, you know, Jim, uh, you know, the interesting thing is that the school systems were set up for those that had certain basic skill sets. And I didn't fit into that category, but, um, you know, using the part of my brain for, like you were saying, imagination, creativity, allowed me to actually use that part of my brain and develop in it. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, I, I laugh and I joke with Liam, you know, we say we're great visionaries, but part of me really means that, like, um, I, I use that part of my brain where I'm not a detailed person at all. Um, you know, I'm not a great implementer of things at all, 
but I'm able to see the big picture, how everybody benefits and put it together. And so, you know, I did develop school sets, um, uh, skill sets, but here's the irony of the whole thing. Because I learned early in my life to be able to chunk information, when I went to school, what most people don't know about me is I worked hard. I worked my ass off. I studied a lot. I had good support, people that I work with. I um, graduated fourth in my class, magna cum laude, uh, with honors and a bunch of recognitions. Uh, a, because I worked hard, and B, because I really developed skills that really helped me get through that. But more so, not even in the school structure and the infrastructure of school, but in life, uh, to be able to actually be able to create relationships, uh, to be able to work with people, uh, to be able to be a team player and stuff like that. And so, you know, as I said before, um, my weaknesses became my strengths. Yeah, you know, I, I, I noticed that you've uh, mentioned quite a few uh, influencers in the profession, and uh, one of them being Dan Bay and his group with Close for Cairo. And I think, you know, honestly, that everybody that wants to make more of an impact in the profession should definitely attend it. And, you know, it's an investment in yourself, just like you going to college and getting your degree. And I think yeah. that that's the way that people have to look at the future of chiropractic is, you know, you're only going to get so much of training and resources from your degree where most of the real secrets and all the tips are taught post-grad. And they're, they're shared in the hallways at Berkshires. They're shared in the hallways at Mile High. They're shared yeah. in the hallways in, 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 you know, the late nights after sushi. You know, it's, it's, it's usually a resource of uh, relationship communication that gets you across that line, which it sounds yeah. like it happened to you as well. Yeah, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, a few of the things that we do with Berkshires, um, you know, and I love about events is that, you know, uh, if you look at the structure for the Berkshires, what I really try to do is, uh, and, and in the er, in the early days, my model was to deliverable usable content. I think I actually coined that um, because what I kind of felt is that. Uh, I'm not putting down anything. I think they're all great. I, you know, I, I think highly of all events. I don't think there's any bad events out there where we all gather and learn and create brotherhood and you know colleagues and, and network. Um, but what I saw was a model of of, of a, a longer presentation where somebody could come in and they could develop who they are what they're actually bringing, this is how you need to go back and use it, and then close. And I just found that myself personally, when I was at seminars and I saw a 20 minute speaker after 20 minute speaker, is that I was on overload. I didn't have time because of my own handicaps to digest information. What I was getting was a lot of spiz, which was not, not a bad thing, it's a great thing. But I wasn't really taking home anything that I could use. I felt like, oh, I'm here, and um, I spent all this time and money and away from practice and travel and airlines, and I don't have anything to show for it. And so my model wasn't to actually disrupt anybody, and I know we use the word disrupting a lot, but my model was to create what I thought would be a great contribution for people that thought like me, that needed more time to walk through a process of understanding how to get from point A to point B to point C. And so what I did is I created the Berkshires and the first one was a total failure. I did it in one day, Jim, I, I look back and I laugh now because I had a bunch of speakers and I didn't even put in speaker breaks. We just went from announcing one speaker to the next and I was the MC and I just went in and, and, and uh, when I got done, I realized somebody came up to me and said, hey, do you have a, a bathroom break built into this somewhere? Like, I'm busting over here. And so when I, when I look back and realize, you know what, I, I, I don't have an MBA in seminars and stuff like that, is that um, I needed to expand the program but leave enough time to bring uh, content to it and to allow for fellowship. And so when I did that, it was a total home run because we had people coming on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And at the Berkshires, they're all, you know, 45 minutes, 60 minute, 90 minute presentations. 
So when you take somebody like David Fletcher, it's a an injustice, you know, injustice in my eyes to have him speak for 20 minutes when he could bring so much information together and somebody could live, leave with um, a great understanding of how they're using technology, why they should be using technology, how it applies, how it should be communicated. And so in order to do that, what we did is we had a full day on Thursday. We ended at 5. We had a full day on Friday. We ended at 5. We had a full day on Saturday, and we ended at 5. And we would have from 5 until nobody went to sleep the whole weekend <laughs> to network, to actually have parties. I would t- I'd take everybody out. I think you've been to Jay Spice, which we'll be going back to again this year uh, for an incredible banquet. Um, but to give them a taste of the town, but also to be able to do that. And the feedback sometimes was greater than the presentations. People say, we got to get back to Jay's. we got to do this hat party again. we got to do this. Hmm. I got so much. I got to sit and have breakfast with Irene. I got to share dinner with Irene. I got to, you know, chat all night with David Steinberg, uh, who pours his heart out and rents, literally rents a room and, you know, works with people all weekend in this room to do these things that they're struggling on. So what I found, you know, early on is that we needed to incorporate more of that because people were telling me that they wanted to have more of that network. They wanted to hear more female speakers. They wanted to have more time to to download information. So Berkshires was really created on a lot of mistakes, which I looked, I changed, I had really good insight from trusted sources, Liam and Sean and Jack and Peter and all these people. And I made a lot of mistakes and I recreated it. And each year it just got better and bigger. So what would you be able to accomplish if more people knew about and attended the Berkshires every year? So what a lot of people don't notice about the Berkshires, and you know, and I don't say this egotistically, um, I, I say this because I, you know, just really kind of want people to understand who I am and what I do. Um, I started out early because I wanted to have a gathering. I wanted to have a place where um, I could create a different venue for again people that thought like me. And one of the big things was, and, and you know, I'm, I'm grateful for it, is that I didn't need the money. And so rather than make this a monetized thing where I was bringing people in and putting money into my pocket, which again, I'm a capitalist, so I don't have any problems with programs that do that, so I'm not making them wrong. I just wanted to do something different. And I started early on by going ahead and creating a platform where we could look at the cost, we could go ahead and market, we could go ahead and do things, but give back to the profession. I wanted to be able to support things like um, uh, the Foundation for Vertebral Subluxation, the Australia Spinal Research Foundation, uh, Sherman College, uh, the ICPA. And so each year, what we basically did um, is we found some type of organization that really could benefit from it. And we become a, we became a fundraiser for these organizations. And, and I gotta say, and um, you know, I, I'm actually quite proud of that because it started a model, Mile High, which came after that used the same model. And Danny really is knocking it out and doing, you know, the exact same thing, maybe even at a greater level, um, and, and raising more money. And, you know, I could say that the Berkshires, I don't know about Danny, but I know it's very significant. One of the donations to the foundation, I believe last year was twenty fifty thousand dollars um, This year we raised for the Scottish school $20,000. We raised uh, 10,000 plus for Oakla Haven. And so this was a unique group of people that were coming together for the right reasons to learn, to grow, to prosper, and certainly to give back. And so, you know, going on 10 years, um, I could honestly and proudly say that we've donated between a hundred to $150,000 back into the profession where it was needed. Um, and, 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 uh, you know, it allowed me to do it with a clear conscience. 
Um, do I hold money back? Sure, I seed it into the next year. Um, you know, have we gotten above and beyond? Yep. And, you know, we continue to build and we continue to get back more in, either, in, in each year. And so the donations have gone up significantly as we're doing it this year. Um, what we're actually doing is using the money to donate to the Mexican college, right? What most people take for granted and we look at student loans and we look what's happening over here. The Mexican college and the exchange rate, some of these guys can't afford to buy books, green books. Um, we've gotten them donated to the IFCO. Some of these guys can't afford to come to a seminar, the air, airline fee um, and, and the attendance and uh, the hotel is like a mortgage to them. And so we're raising capital to be able to donate stuff to the school that's needed um, so they get a better education, they can serve those communities. Um, to be able to get them here without the burden of finances. I'm going to gift the seminar. We're going to raise money for travel and for hotel and um, to do all the stuff. Because if we help them and we make a lead way into that, could you imagine the philosophy in Mexico where it's existent as great leaders like Aaron Gomez and some of those guys do incredible work there. But could you imagine if they could have the information, the communication, uh, the infrastructure of what Berkshire's is bringing, is what Dan Bay is bringing, is what Sean Dill is bringing, is what Tristan is bringing, is what you guys are bringing. Could you imagine if they could pull that all together, bring back to Mexico? Um, they could be running programs there and teaching other chiropractors who could be serving a community. Very few chiropractors in, in Mexico with a, a huge population that's totally underserved because they don't know how to communicate it. Um, they don't know how to, and they don't have the ability to get these resources. And so um, I love what we're doing. I'm proud of what we're doing. And, and you know, constantly uh, disrupting, changing things, and, you know, making it better for the profession. So my vision really was, is to make things better than I left them and um, not be a personal burden of my own time and resources, uh, but putting my time and my personal resources into making it happen. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Dr. Barbara Eaton's 56-day chiropractic boot camp, Move Well University, The Black Diamond Club, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Dr. Alok Trivedi, Universal Traction Systems, Vantage Point Marketing, Element Mattresses, Imaging Services, Zingit Solutions, Cairo Thin, Dr. Peter Goldman's Zone School of Healing, and Everest Chiropractic Boot Camp. Let's hustle. I love that. You know, something that a lot of people might not know about what Luke and I have done over the past two years down in Mexico is we've sent, it's a small contribution, but we've sent eight speeder boards down to the Mexican chiropractic group down there so they can practice their techniques. And, yes. uh, you know, not, not one, uh, we, we, we've bought that stuff right out of our own pockets. So it's cool. Yeah. It's cool to be able to contribute and to see how just that one small gesture the past yeah. two years, we're affecting that group down there in Veracruz and they're getting better at adjusting. You know, when we yes. had the opportunity to travel our film down there uh, two years ago and we were able to go speak in front of the groups at three of the uh, four schools down there. Um, that was a very impressive opportunity for us to go down there and make an impact and to be right. able to uh, see what's going on down there. And you are right. Um, there, there is a movement down there and it does need to be uh, taken care of and it needs to be protected just like the sacred trust. And, yeah. you know, there's never um, an amount that's too little to give. And there's yeah. no, it's whether it's our time, our talents, or our treasure, like a lot of people say, um, sometimes it's our time that people are very devoted to just making sure that people understand something. And mentorship is massive. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and here's the thing, Jim. I think that, you know, shout out to David Fletcher, um, who, who, look, I totally admire and adore, and adore. I believe through the IFCO and the leadership of the IFCO, uh, David Fletcher is working with them to bring them technology that they 
couldn't possibly ever afford. I mean, could you imagine trying to buy a substation for the school? Um, it would be more expensive than running the whole school. It would be the biggest budget. And David is working with them. And, you know, you have uh, Anthony, Anthony, um, oh, I forget his name, but also donated tables, upper cervical tables. And, you know, to me, a huge amount of admiration and respect go out to the people that are doing it at bigger levels. And what I wanted to do is have each person that attends the Berkshires is to play a small role in that. So when I donate money at the end of the seminar, I don't say this is from Scott Garber. I say this is from the attendees who actually showed up here and paid to be here that were able to fund the Australia's Bottle Research Foundation, getting research. Um, it's for, you know, the ICPA, which is bringing greater programming. It's for the Mexican population that really can't afford to be here. Could you imagine if we could get 10 chiropractors from Mexico? That's my goal. I'll hit it. Even if I have to pay it out of my own pocket to come here and be able to go back and communicate and use what they learned here to teach 10 more chiropractors to get more people into care then that little donation that you made coming to the Berkshires is significant. You never know how far reaching, right? Um, that little thing that you did is actually going to change the masses. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, you know, I, I look at the last one and to be able to donate so much to Oakley Haven, um, they were over the moon, you know, they were just barely getting by and we gave them hope. And if anybody was there and listened to the presentation that she did and what she was doing and how she was helping, could you imagine not making a donation to that and allowing that work to go on for the truly sick of the sick? Um, we that were there allowed for that to happen. Not Scott Garber. But as a community, as a group, as a support structure uh, for the Berkshires, we gave that more time, we gave that more resources, we gave of our energy, and that's now going to allow them to continue on doing the work that they do. There's no better gratification than that. And you're exactly right, Scott. And, you know, we're only as good as the rest of the team that we built around us. And, you know, that's the, the truth of the matter is there's so much to go on into building a career like ours. Um, yeah. You know, having a, a megaphone and a media voice for the chiropractic profession is a huge necessity. And so many people have kind of dibble, dabbled in it and tried, but they haven't been consistent enough and stayed the course. And I think that that's, that's something that's defining moment for us is we've just been really pushing along as hard as we can with as good as information as we can provide to people. And I think that was a huge missing link, too. So I think that all of us supporting each other with a good, uh, you know, I guess um, it's not just about how much money we have, but it's about how much drive we have. That's and, right. and then when we're all driving for a common goal, which is to get more people under chiropractic care and to teach people about vertebral subluxation and getting people, you know, actually... You know, it's not just the, the people that need it. It's the chiropractor that needs it. And yeah. I think that's what you've been, you know, mentioning a lot on the, this talk is talking about people getting involved with their groups, people building their team around them, people understanding how much value that they create with just mentorship and, yeah. you know, having having the ability to be heard and then having the ability to have the experience to be the person that gives the guidance. Yeah. So, I, yeah, and, you know, I, I guess the next question for us then that gets us into, like, the, the, the uh, meat and potatoes is where do you see the profession going in the next 10 or 20 years? You know, look, I, I, uh, there's a lot that goes on in a profession. You know, there's the politics, there's the backroom slamming, there's the different groups, the hate groups, the love groups. Um, what I really, uh, and, and look, I've been involved, involved in, in both sides. So Jim, look, I'll, you know, I'll publicly say, um, and, 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 you know, I, I'd say anybody that, that would not uh, truly admit this as a human being is probably full of shit. But look, I have my bright, loving, 
uh, you know, progressive, wanting to support uh, self that's continuing to pour into the profession. And then, you know, I have the dark side of me. Um, you know, I've done some horrible things in my past, uh, in my addictions. I've hurt a lot of people, family members, friends. Um, you know, I've lied, I've been lied to, I've cheated, I've been cheated. I've conned, I've been conned. And so I've been on both sides of it. Um, I express most of my life uh, in the place of, of light and love. Um, I mean by, by well by what I do. I'm constantly trying to do the right thing, support infrastructure. I've been on the other side where, you know, I've been in hate groups and said some bad things and attacked people. I got and I totally take responsibility for it. But what I actually see happening, which is comforting for me, is that there is incredible groups, like I said before, and this is by no means uh, pitching groups, but, you know, your question was, how do I see things going? I've never been more excited in my life about the potential for understanding, for growth, and for development. I gotta say, in the last five years, uh, going to Money Matters and going to uh, BCD Marketing and going to D Sean Dills uh, and, and, and Dan Bays, um, you know, in fact, if you ask my partner, Bill Trevins, who I own a clinic with, uh, I took Bill, and he's over the top, and he's a guy that has a very, very successful practice. This ultra made him uber successful. His practice life is easier, everything's easier. But here's a guy that had all the trappings of success. But by taking him, realizing, and getting him on the right track, his life has become easier, it's become more successful, he's collecting more money, uh, everything's just better. And so with I see the advent of these, and the different groups coming on, and people like Linda Slack, who is actually teaching pediatrics and has a whole program, Steve Tullius, which is actually teaching people how to bring their communities in and using social media, uh, and how to bring it all together. I honestly believe that there's never been a better chance for a chiropractor. And here's where um, I put my money where my mouth is. I have a niece that just started chiropractic school at Sherman. Um, uh, I got a beautiful letter from her thanking my wife and I for being a guiding force in her moving into this profession. I would have never moved any of my relatives into a profession that I didn't think that there was a potential to learn, grow, serve, and prosper. Um, she's now a try one at Sherman. She's in the greatest of hands. Um, you know, the program is great, but I also recognize the limitations of what school's going to give her. So don't think that I won't be along her side, encouraging her to do the same thing that I'm asking the general public to do here. Get involved with BCD, the Black Diamond Club. Get involved with the Cairo Sushi. Um, hook up with people that key are going to create a loving environment that's conducive to growth, right? So there are some environments out there where they give you some growth, but it's also toxic. But to actually have the formula of working in something that's uplifting, something that's using uh, great predictable resources um, in, in actually educating on how to market, how to communicate, how to sell, how to, how to understand a philosophy. Don't think for one minute that I won't have my niece doing that all through school um, because I don't want her to just have a great education and then not how to use that. So I am going to be responsible for helping her to actually work within these matters of limitation, okay? And there's a limitation, and I don't blame the schools. I think that within the resources that they have and what they're required to do, they couldn't possibly teach six years of marketing and communication. Their job is to get somebody to the school and actually get them to be to the point that they're qualified to actually practice. But it's not about getting them to be successful. And so me personally, um, I've heard it said before, I don't think there's a better time um, for chiropractic 
um, to be bringing it to the world. The world is longing for what we have. Um, I think if we could distinguish, if I might use that word, um, uh, between what the two different or the different brands of chiropractic is, I'm not a brand basher. I have room for everybody to do what they what they what they do. Um, don't care if they're doing foot levels. Great. We all help our people in a in a unique way. But for the brand that wants to practice uh, subluxation centered and have that support, I would also like that for that to be there. And it's not. Foot levels does a great job in actually filling that niche and having people that go out and do extremity adjusting and orthotic fitting and injuries to ankles and wrists and shoulders, no problem with that. They help a lot of people. But I think it's only the Berkshires a mile high. Again, not to put down Kairo Sushi, they're bringing a great aspect in the business marketing communication. But... Uh, um, uh, mile High and, and, and Berkshires, from what I've known and from what I've seen, are kind of leading the way in trying to install that brand out um, of people that want to practice subluxation-centered chiropractic. So a minute ago, you were mentioning marketing. Can you tell us some of your real-world marketing experience and what are some of your favorite marketing tactics you could share with our listeners? So you're not gonna you're not gonna believe this, um, but please do. <laughs> um, I am not big into technology. I've been blessed with creating systems. Um, you know, in my uh, so I graduated in two thousand, end of two thousand two thousand one, so seventeen years. Um, of of being out on the streets. Um, talking chiropractic, community chiropractic, doing spinal screenings, um, educating uh, my, my, my patient base. Uh, so a lot of my practices, thank God, um, have been from being out and, and doing uh, talks and, and communication, com communicating, reaching out to doctors, educating the doctors in my community, uh, educating my patients and you know and another thing that I'm proud to say look I never wanted to have a 500,000 practice a week that's not me um, you know I'm I'm happy enough to see 70 80 people's a day that's max for me um, but what I've been able to do um, is to be able to work with them to educate them. So my biggest marketing thing, quite honestly, and my retention, my retention is extraordinarily high. I don't have a lot of new people coming through my door. Um, I can honestly tell you it's probably about 50 or 60 new people a week that are referrals um, from medical doctors, from you know patients, from past screenings that I've done, from talks that I've done. But I'm not a big, let's get in the masses, see whoever we could change over. Um, I have a very high red velvet rope. Uh, it's my way from the beginning. This is who I am. This is how I work. I'm a straight shooter. I, I don't hold punches for them. They know before I ever do the exam what the course is going to be. What if I find the visit frequency is going to be? What the process is going to be after? I have no qualms in telling somebody uh, what the corrective care process is, how long it's going to take, again, based upon their own body's clock and being able to heal and repair. And so I found by understanding principles, commuting principles, that my retention is very high, my referral internally is high. So I don't, um, I don't do a whole lot of marketing. Uh, recently, I did a Facebook ad thing, uh, really to test it out and to see how that really worked. And I did okay. You know, my return on investment was actually great. Uh, but the truth is, is I didn't want to really work that hard to see all those people, um, to do exams with pre -un unqualified people, um, to get them into my office and then say, well, gee, I can't pass possibly afford to see you. I'm not interested, I'm just interested in having my back cracked or my pain taken away. And so my staff and I found that, you know what, we do really fairly very well. 
um, in our practice, um, and that uh, to stay in integrity with what we do was better than to carry on a program that was just bringing us some more patients. And so we kind of abandoned that. So when you're in your spare time or your downtime, do you have any favorite books or podcasts or what, what do you like to do for leisure? So um, I'm, I'm pretty big into network groups. I have a core group of uh, people that that um, I work with and um, you know constantly learning constantly updating constantly planning um, you know when when I got done with the last Berkshires I went with a core crew of mine uh, we went to the Dominican um, it was incredible and we planned what are we going to do who are we going to support who are we going to have um, how are the people going to benefit Uh, And we put together um, um, uh, an incredible program. And then through the years, it's not like I put it into place and it's just waiting around. Uh, We're tweaking things. We're creating flyers. We're uh, anticipating other speakers, looking at the needs. You know, do we have a balance of women? Do we have a balance of people that really haven't given a chance to come up and speak? Uh, Berkshire's is great on that. And again, you know, pat myself on the back. Um, We've launched many, many, many speakers that have gone on to do great things. And I take, again, a lot of pride, uh, you know, in launching people like Linda Slack. Uh, Sean Dill was one of the first people that spoke uh, before most people knew who Sean Dill was. People don't know that. Um, I gave him the opportunity. It's an old joke that I had with Sean. I said, you know what? Bring Lacey first. Let her speak. If I like her, then you could speak um, because you're bad for my brand. You know, I I was joking with him. Um, and, and Andy Roberts, uh, uh, God, God bless and, and, and you know, may he rest in peace, um, used to break Sean's, you know, Sean's nuts about it, if you would, uh, and say, you know, you've been thrown out of too many places. And so when I look at Sean and I look at Steve and I look at all these people that we've helped, Amy Haas, uh, Bruce Steinberg, and we helped to kind of get them up there and give them, I am so proud when I see them speaking on, uh, on, on, um, uh, at new seminars, uh, Monique is a great one. Uh, nobody heard, heard of Monique. Um, I uh, spoke with Jack Burrow. He said, you got to give her a chance. We got her on. And now look what's happening. She's speaking to the Mexicans uh, in Mexico. She's going to be speaking at Mile High. Um, you've heard, guys heard her speak there. She was profound. And so we're able to actually go ahead and use that to now promote that and get more of her in the profession that really needs to hear people like uh, Monique. Make sense? Absolutely. So we're at the point in our episode now where uh, we get some resources from you. Where can people go to sign up for the Berkshires? Where can people go to find out more about you and your clinic? So, you know, first, again, um, you know, I, I really want to kind of, uh, you know, uh, certainly mile high would be a good place to start. Uh, Danny's, um, who's worked just as hard as I have done, we've been in communication. Uh, Danny and I are like brothers. Uh, when he came to me with this whole idea that he wanted to model what I was doing, I said, Danny, look, let's work together. Let's get this going. And again, even with Danny, trial and error, we share resources, we work with each other. So, so again, the profession could prosper. So first... You know, if you're not out there and, and actually supporting Mile High, you know, I first want to say that, look, uh, it'll give you a good idea of what the Berkshires is really doing just by, by being at Mile High. So certainly support that event. It's a first class event. Donnie Epstein, I mean, look at the people that he's bringing in, uh, the money that he's been able to raise. Uh, you know, him and Rochelle and, you know, my prayers and everything go out to the family. My heart is with them, you know, with all the stuff that's going on. Um, you know, uh, tremendous, tremendous influences. I bow my hat to them and they need to support just like the Berkshires. Get out there and support them. Your time, your money, your resources are going to a great thing. They've both worked so hard, not just Danny, but Rochelle too, um, to create this community, uh, to go ahead and get back to the profession. Um, you know, it pleases my heart when I hear, you know, what they're doing. And each year it's so much better um, and, and better than the last. And they developed, go out and support them at Mile High, uh, www.milehigh.com. 
uh, that event. Um, and I think that that's truly worthy of, of support. Uh, your money's going to go to a great place and you're going to get great information from the people that they have. Um, you know, secondly, um, is, you know, I'm a big supporter of Sherman. Um, <laughs> get behind the school. Um, you know, we did something great at Cairo Shoot Sushi. Um, you know, in, in trying to unite the schools and again, they were going to create this brand of subluxation centered chiropractic. Uh, we need the resource of where they start to guide them and where they need to go. Okay, so the school is the first step. The school we need to work with to get them to the second step of like, you know what, uh, certainly go to Sherman Lyceum, get out to the Berkshires, look at Mile High, go to DE, you know, go to these events that are actually going to support their growth um, and development. Um, uh, the next thing is, is uh, you know, get involved with groups, the Black Diamond Club. Um, you know, look, I just can't, and, and Sean is a friend, so, you know, with all um, uh, transparency here, I don't only recommend him because he's a good friend of mine, him and Lacey, uh, love them dearly. Uh, but I also know where their hearts are and what they're trying to develop and uh, they're constantly thinking about better ways of bringing more information. And if you look at what they've created and who they supported, I mean, including Tristan, uh, and Tristan with them, with Cairo Sushi, I think that they're doing an, uh, an amazing thing and could use the support and um, the result is, is that you'll be supported in developing mindset and developing communications and business uh, systems and structures. Certainly Kairo Sushi. Um, Tristan, um, most people don't know, I knew Tristan before most people. I was one of the first people that, su that supported Tristan. Um, you know, he'll tell you in one of his early adventures. Um, his dad, I know from my Parker days when I was involved with Parker. Um, both of them, and dad, uh, more so than, than the way that I know Tristan, I know his dad longer, uh, which is why I got involved with Tristan on, under his dad's recommendations. Um, it's just got a heart of gold. Um, the guy is, is very uh, authentic. Uh, very generous, um, uh, really wanting to move the profession forward and, you know, put a ton of their own money and a ton of their time and their resources into running these podcasts and a ton of money into bringing these great speakers. And so, you know, by all means, you're going to get incredible benefit. Uh, Tristan, is, is, as far as I know, and more, Sean Dill more recently, of bringing in outside professionals, not self-proclaimed professionals, but look at the lineup uh, that 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 um, uh, uh, Tristan had at Cairo Sushi. Um, most people couldn't afford in their lifetimes to actually pay those people to come and get the advice that they have. Uh, Wayne Dyer and uh, you know different people that he brought, and and it was just. You know, uh, at a huge cost, it was brought together. Get behind that support, that learn from that. If you're just supporting it and not doing anything, you're wasting your time and money. But get behind something like that. And look, I always appreciate um, the the support with the Berkshires. Um, I've always ran it more on, on, on attraction than promotion. Um, you don't see a lot of my flyers. You don't see me doing Facebook Lives. Not to say it's not a good thing about it. It's not my time. It's not my expertise. It's not my forte. Uh, what I'm really about um, is creating something that creates value. So people tell people about it. So please tell others about it. Have them listen to the podcast, figure out who I am, what I'm about. Um, it really is a ph phenomenal program. So many people um, have gotten incredible understanding and a start. Um, and has allowed a lot of people to go on to be successful. And that's what I want, uh, because at the end of the day, the more people we have being successful, then the next evolution of it is, is they could give back to the profession. If we're all able to give back from the 
passion and abundance. The profession could get the research. It can get everything that we need to allow chiropractic to succeed moving forward. Without us cooperating and being on the same page and supporting some of this stuff, they don't have the money, they don't have the resources, they're not big farm, they're not foot levelers, they're not standard process. They don't have that money to actually do what we need to do to bring subluxation-centered chiropractic, uh, detect and correct vertebral subluxations to our profession, to our communities, to the world. Well, thank you for sharing all that with us today, Scott. And if there's anything that we can do to be a trusted resource moving forward with any of these groups that you support, um, please don't hesitate to put our name in the hat. Uh, Jim, I, I put your name in the hat, and I'm sorry. I, I really should have um, uh, should have really mentioned that. Uh, you know, in that, you know, I, I think sometimes, you know, um, I, I'm going to think of a million people that I didn't thank, um, didn't shout out. Um, but, you know, after and, and uh, you know, what I really want you to get on a very deep level is that you're supporting, like Tristan, a profession that's not even your own. You just have seen the value supported in your own ways, with your own means and your own expertise. You're doing things that I couldn't have done. I would have never got on here. I would have never gotten the schedule. I would have never, I, I'm using my wife's computer and I had to figure out how to get on Skype. Um, uh, so funny enough, that's why I'm calling from her Skype address. I would have never done this. And so by uh, you guys going ahead and making this available, it helps me, it helps the profession. And, uh, you know, I've seen you out there at every level. I first met you actually at Mile High when you were filming your first documentary. I remember you filming Liam and um, I'm sitting in the back watching. Um, and so you do a tremendous amount and I think that people realize that. And never are we appreciated. I know that you put your time and resources in into doing things, but I mean this sincerely. Um, you know, I, I forgot to appreciate you earlier, and thanks for saying something uh, because I really had meant to, and I really value and trust uh, you guys as a resource. The work that you're doing, your integrity, your transparency, um, second to none. Oh, thank you. You know, I, I wasn't looking for that as a response, but, you know, I, I do appreciate the, the validation for the time spent. And, you know, um, yeah. it's been eight years for me in the chiropractic profession, and uh, I don't look at myself, you know, not staying the course for the rest of my career. And sure. I, I think that the profession is uh, in, in desperate need of media attention. And there's, yeah. there's people out there that are trying to beat the drum, but it's in such a small circle, no one hears it. So, yeah. you know... We're, we, <laughs> we're really speaking the same language. So my whole talk was about people supporting the profession, the profession supporting people. And Jim, you know, it's look as you're doing incredible stuff and, and, and making stuff available. And, you know, again, I would get behind the profession. And you know what? Good idea. I mean, you know, ideas come to me as I'm actually having conversations. You know, at one point, we'll do a fundraiser for the work that you guys are doing. You know, I certainly would want Berkshires to support uh, the communications and the media and stuff that you're doing. Look, you're doing it for our profession, and our profession should be behind you. Um, so, you know, we're, we're really talking. And when I hear you saying the same thing I'm saying, we're in parallel um, universes with regards to what we need and how we can support who we are and what we bring. But we also have to reach out because we need the profession to understand that so they can support at a greater level uh, what we're about and what we're trying to bring. I couldn't agree more. And uh, just for the audience out there that's listening, when is the next uh, Berkshires? What are the dates? The Berkshires is actually March 20. Who? Um, well, let me just double check. You know what? <laughs> it's an easy. It's an to, easy slip up. Sometimes I forget my I, birthday. <laughs> I don't want to give you the wrong dates. Um, the Berkshires is um, March 21st to March 23rd, 2019. 
Um, we're going to be having it, all the events that I do, like Cranwell and stuff like that, are in historic places. Um, so it's not a typical, which is the beauty of the Berkshires. You've been there, Jim, so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's held in places that are opulent, uh, that help to build esteem, uh, that help to feel chiropractors be in a place that's worthy of them being there. Um, we cut really incredible deals. Uh, with these places because of the time of the year and the Berkshires, uh, they go unused. And so we're able to organize these really incredible rates. This year we're having it at the Williams the Williams Inn in Williamstown. Williamstown is historic. It's a college town. Um, Ivy League College there, Williamstown College. And uh, what we're going to be doing is doing the seminar there. Uh, over the three days, it'll actually be uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday be a travel day. Uh, right now, the prices that are all, are the all-time low, we generally tend to raise them, is that it enables us to actually accumulate more towards contributions, deductions, overall cost of, 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 of running the event. Um, and you could probably uh, go and register at www tick t-i-c event e-v-e-n-t dot com so it's uh, tick event uh, dot com and um, that'll give you all the information on the speakers who's going to be coming uh, we have a great great lineup um, top notch people and um, I think it'll be a, another super home run so again uh, my good friend Liam says get it on your calendar so you don't miss it and commit to being there. And so that way, um, you know, you don't miss it and you'll understand greater what it is. Fantastic. Well, that just about wraps up this episode. Is there any uh, final closing words or advice you want to give people listening? No, I want, I want you guys to use your ninja skills to take my video recording and make me beautiful. Uh, we we Talk only about my face, <laughs> talk about my hair, you know, whatever you can do. We only recorded the audio, but uh, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for uh, being our guest today, Scott. I can't wait to see you at the next event. Yep. The good news is um, about doing it on audio is I have a face made for audio. <laughs> <laughs> You're too funny, man. We appreciate you being with us today. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. See you at Mile High. Yeah, I'll definitely see you there. Okay. See you. Bye, folks. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.